there, I found out that uh, my two nails cannot work again. On the process, I started using wheelchair. And at times, I used the one they call Rolato in Germany, that is Walker with four legs, since 2014. Till now, I cannot do anything. I cannot walk. Even my, uh, I, have, I cannot take care of myself, really, financially. I depend on the, on the welfare of the, of the German government. Since I've been suffering, I've been suffering. I, I cannot even go to market. I can't help myself and do my housework. I cannot clean how I want to clean. When I'm cooking, I will make a, a lot of uh, break. Going to sit down and uh, come back to wear my leg again if I can or I cannot. So it has been a very big problem. I can't even go to my market. I can't do anything. Then that's what brought me here now. As I, I was watching Emmanuel TV since middle of last year. I was wondering, this is a country I'm coming from, and something like this is happening here. And I've been suffering this thing for the past 13 years. Then I've been watching this Emmanuel TV night. At times, I will not sleep the whole night. I, will, I watch it the whole night. At 6 o'clock, I start sleeping. Then I've been anxious to come here. That is why I've been here since... Uh, almost two weeks now. And as I came in, the woman of God prayed for me, and she prayed for me. I felt something, that something has left me. And uh, I can, I start walking without, without limping the way I used to limp. I thank God. Let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So, madam, we know that uh, you mentioned that you had come in a wheelchair. That was a wheelchair that brought you from Germany uh, from the airport. And we also saw that you were later on you were using crutches and you were having a lumbar corset. Tell us, we are no longer seeing you in the wheelchair. We are no longer seeing you with your crutches. Tell us exactly what has happened to you. Yeah, I was using wheelchair. I booked wheelchair for the airport, from German airport to Turkish airport till uh, our Nigerian airport here. And after that, I start using rollator because I can't walk without, uh, I couldn't walk without holding anything. And now you can see that I, I come down the step that I couldn't before. Without holding anything. Without any aids at all. Yes. Let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. And tell us, are you experiencing any pain or discomfort? Tell us how you are feeling after your healing. Yeah, after my healing, I've, I'm no more feeling the pains I used to feel. If can, you, can you just walk majestically in the midst of the children of God? Glory be to Jesus. That's the same lady who was healed, no longer using crutches or any form of support to the glory of God. That is perfect and complete healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Madam, we know that uh, also you had received a prophecy from the woman of God. Yeah. Yes, that is true. Can you explain to us the prophecy? Yeah, the woman of God told me that uh, the cause of my problem is the I do the worship in my family long ago. And uh, I confirm it to be true. Because when I was, I can remember when I was like four years or thereabout, when they when they do something like sacrifice and kill fowl and everything, I will be around them observing what they are doing. 
But we saw uh, that uh, the woman of God prayed for you and you received both healing and deliverance, which means that you are disconnected from those idols in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us put our hands together for Jesus. So, madam, we'd like you to advise us. I think you are in the best position to advise those who are in a similar situation that you were once in, those who are in pain, they cannot, they're having difficulty in walking. How can you advise them? I can advise them that those who, are, who have difficulties in walking, they should not delay, as I delay coming here, they should come to God without wasting time because I wasted good 13 years before I came here. They should not delay. They should run to God immediately when they have problems like I had. So and run to Jesus Christ, the answer to all fundamental issues of life. Oh, madam, we are so happy that uh, we are seeing you in a completely different state, that Jesus Christ has given you a total overhauling and we are so grateful for you to come back and share your testimony to the glory of God for your perfect and complete healing. And we just want to advise you that as Jesus Christ has taken you out of sickness and into good health, just make his word the standard for your life. And we know that that healing will remain permanent in Jesus' name. On a entendu le merveilleux témoignage de cette femme qui, vient, qui est nigériane, qui vient de l'Allemagne. Elle est venue ici à la synagogue de toute nation, qu'elle avait des difficultés à marcher, et même la, presque l'incapacité de marcher. Car elle a dit qu'elle est venue de l'Allemagne au Nigeria sur chaise roulante, qu'elle ne pouvait pas se déplacer sur ses deux jambes. Elle a dit que tout a commencé parce qu'elle travaillait à Plantin. Elle faisait aussi du travail en extra durant la nuit. Elle travaillait vraiment 24 heures sur 24. Et un jour, lorsqu'elle se rendait au travail, elle a dit que ses jambes sont arrêtées de fonctionner au milieu de la rue. Elle a dû appeler un taxi pour pouvoir la ramener chez elle car elle ne pouvait plus marcher. C'est comme cela qu'elle a commencé à utiliser un déambulateur pour pouvoir se déplacer jusqu'à ce que cela devienne très difficile pour elle et qu'en 2014, elle reste justement à la maison qu'elle ne pouvait plus aller travailler. Elle a dit que c'est comme cela qu'elle a trouvé chercher des solutions pour ce problème sans trouver de solutions car les deux genoux étaient complètement usés. Elle est venue à la synagogue église de toutes les nations avec ses deux béquilles. Elle ne peut pas se déplacer sans ses béquilles. Elle est venue en chaise roulante de l'Allemagne jusqu'au Nigeria. Et aujourd'hui, elle a dit qu'après que la femme de Dieu ait prié pour elle, immédiatement, elle n'a senti aucune douleur. Elle commence à marcher librement et jusqu'à aujourd'hui, elle est revenue donner son témoignage pour la gloire de Dieu. Que maintenant, marcher librement peut faire se baisser et faire ses tâches quotidiennes pour la gloire de Dieu. Acabamos de escuchar el increíble testimonio de esta mujer que es originariamente de Nigeria, pero ya vive en Alemania. Ella nos comenta de que asistió a la Sinagoga Iglesia de todas las naciones con un problema de dificultad para caminar. Debido a esto, ella tenía que utilizar un corcel lumbar, unas muletas y además tenía que estar confinada en una silla de ruedas. Ella nos comenta de que su viaje de Alemania hasta aquí en Nigeria, ella tenía que utilizar silla de ruedas y tenía que utilizar distintos medicamentos para poder, para que ella pueda estar para ser apta para poder viajar desde Alemania hasta Nigeria. Nos comenta de que esto le afectó mucho su vida diaria, de que esto permitió de que no permitía de que ella pudiera trabajar y realizar sus actividades diarias como solía hacer, pero gracias a la oración de la mujer de Dios, ella pudo instantáneamente caminar y recibió palabra profecía que trajo liberación a su vida en el nombre de Jesús. Continuamos. person who ran to Jesus Christ and received the wonderful healing they were expecting. Watch your screen. My name is Franca Abiamue. I'm from Delta State. The problem that brought me to Synagogue Church of One Nation is problem of difficulty in walking due to severe pain. I'm using lumbar causes, difficult in breathing high blood pressure, and pathetic ulcer it's for eight years now. So it affected me. I cannot do anything. I cannot do anything on my own. I cannot climb up stairs. I cannot walk this time. I'm not doing anything because of this problem. It's my children that's helping me. I went to many places. I went to different hospitals. I went to church, many churches. So the doctor said there is no avenue that I should be using this uh, lumbar causes, that you should be helping me. But as far as I'm using it, It's not still helping me. I'm still having pains all over my body. Still having pain. This is my last bus stop. I believe that God will visit me today in Jesus' name. 
I believe I'm going to be here today. Amen. My name is Franka Abiamue. What brought me to Synagogue Church of One Nation is difficult in walking due to severe back pain. I am having serious back pain, high blood pressure, and pathetic ulcer. I cannot do anything on my own. Cannot bend. I cannot do anything. It's my children that are helping me. Please, man, go help me. Please, my heart used to breathe fast. Even as I am coming yesterday inside Moto, I nearly faint. Man of God, please help me. Jesus is a helper. Madam, if not God today, at this moment, you would have had three husbands, not one. They want you to marry and remarry. Destroy your relationship. There is a dream you have, very bad dream, that will pursue in the dream. If you can remember, they will chase you one day you fell. That day you fell, this trouble started. It's true, man You're of God. You're going to feel strange things in your body. Yeah, it's true, man of God. It's that true. foolish man, Jesus will cast him out and set you free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up. You are free. Jesus has set you free. Mm -hmm. Amen. Check yourself. You are free. Walk. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. Ah. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. Hallelujah. Let's rejoice with Jesus. Nous venons de voir la vidéo de cette femme qui est venue avec des difficultés à marcher, portant un corset lombaire avec des, des énormes douleurs. Elle a reçu la prière la semaine dernière. Nous allons maintenant écouter son témoignage. Nous avons vu cette femme qui était venue à la synagogue avec un problème de difficulté pour caminer, utilisant un corset lombaire, et comment elle s'est levée après l'oration de l'homme de Dieu. All glory be to God. We can see that smile, a great smile, has enlightened her face, knowing what God Almighty has done in her life. Yes. Uh, share with us your wonderful testimony. My name is Franca Abiamue. This is my daughter, Choma Abiamue. What brought me to Synagogue Church of Foundation is difficult in walking due to severe back pain. Then I was using lumbar corset then. So That is what brought me to Synagogue Church of Foundation. So when I came here, I was opportunity, when man of God, they put me in a prayer line. When a man of God prayed for me. Before you received that opportunity, okay. can you just share with us a little bit about the experience you had during that time? How long did you have that problem for? For seven years. For seven years. I have a, a high blood pressure, then ulcer. I have pain all over my body. Then. So how were you able to manage to do your things? I cannot do anything by myself. It's my children that used to help me. Then. I cannot go anywhere. I cannot climb up there. I cannot go long distance. Then. So finally, after seven years, you came. Yes. And what happened? That is where I get then because I used to watch Emmanuel TV every time. I used to watch Emmanuel TV. So that give me, that give me the uh, faith for me to be here. So when I was here that day, I was opportunity when they arranged me for prayer line. When man of God prayed for me, as I stand up, I feel something left, left me. Then when I stand up, I was very light that day. I was very light. You were instantly healed. Yes, yes. Let's clap for Jesus Christ. Yes, as we're watching the screen, we can see what happened on that day and your instant reaction as you now moved and found you could do what you couldn't do before. Can you explain more what you experienced at that time? When the man of God prayed for me, well, immediately touched me. I don't know where I am. If you can look at the screen, I fell, but I don't know. So when I stand up, as I am, I feel that something left me immediately. So as I stand up, I feel light. I feel very light. No pain. No pain. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we also saw you receiving words of prophecy at that time. What can you say about the prophecy you received? I received false prophecy. I said, Madam, it's a spirit of remarry. It's disturbing you. But today, everything will be over. That spirit will left. Then the second one, he said, before I started having this problem, that I was in the dream when they are pursuing me. I say, yes, man of God, it's true. For that uh, remarried, spirit of remarried, it was in the family. Yes, it was in the family, my mother family. That is what killed my mother. And after so, the prophecy? After the prophecy, the second one, true. Before this problem starts, even the very day that I started to experience the high blood pressure, I was in the dream. They are pursuing me. Many people pursuing me in the dream. So when I wake up, I started breathing up, up, up. That is where the high blood pressure started. And then you said that when you received the prayer, you felt something leave you. Yes, yes, yes. That thing that left you was the demon, the cause behind that sorrow, that pain you are going through. But today, you can see that that sorrow has turned to joy in Jesus' name. Let's clap for Jesus one more time. Well, before we listen to words of advice, we just want to listen to your daughter because we know that she was there with you. So let's hear one or two things that she would like to share about her own experience when you were not fine. So please introduce yourself. My name is Chioma Abiyamuwe, and the woman standing beside me is my mother. She was suffering from difficulty in walking due to severe back pain, and because of that, she has been using lumbar corsets for several years now. Because of that, it has restrained me from doing what I was meant to do. I will be the one to help her do the house chores, most of them. I will help her, I will assist her in cooking doing the washing at home, running the errands as the first daughter of the family. So it was like everything was on me, the load. I was like, when is this going to end? Because every time I would just be alone, crying, praying to God, God, please heal my mother from all this so I could be able to do what I want to do. But now I thank God all those are now in the past. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus. Yes, the past is over in Jesus' name. So, Mom, finally, we want to hear from you. Words of advice you would like to give to others. Emmanuel. My advice to viewers, mostly mother like me, that suffering the same problem that I suffer. I, I thank God that all is over. When you are having this uh, kind of problem, just run to God. Just run to God. The God that healed me will heal you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. She has said it all. Nous allons entendre le merveilleux témoignage de cette femme qui venait à la synagogue de tout l'ancien avec un problème de, au niveau de lombaire. Elle a dit qu'elle portait un corset lombaire à cause de sévères douleurs au niveau de sa colonne vertébrale, qu'elle ne pouvait plus faire ses tâches ménagères ni ses tâches quotidiennes. Elle est venue ici à la synagogue de tout l'ancien, espérant trouver la guérison. Et gloire soit rendue à Dieu après que la femme de Dieu ait prié pour elle, elle n'a senti aucune douleur. Elle dit que les douleurs sont immédiatement sorties d'elle. Elle a reçu aussi une prophétie disant que mariage et remariage. Et effectivement, elle a confirmé que cela est vrai, que c'était une malédiction qui est dans la famille. Et aussi, l'homme de Dieu lui a dit que cela a commencé, son problème de difficulté à marcher, de haute pression du sang a commencé dans un mauvais rêve. Vous le voyez, des gens qui la poursuivaient. Effectivement, elle a dit qu'elle a eu ce rêve, elle a eu plein de personnes qui la poursuivaient. Et après cela, sa, sa tension a commencé à monter, qui fait qu'elle a développé ses difficultés à marcher pour confirmer la prophétie de l'homme de Dieu. Elle rend toute la gloire à Dieu qu'aujourd'hui, elle soit complètement délivrée et complètement guérie de ce problème de spondylose lombaire dont elle souffrait. Elle est maintenant sans corset lombaire pour la gloire de Dieu, elle marche librement. Escuchamos el increíble testimonio de esta mujer. Ella vino a visitar la Sinagoga Iglesia de todas las naciones con un problema de dificultad para caminar, un problema que tenía una parte lumbar, ella tenía que utilizar un corsé lumbar a causa de esto. Y nos dice de que esto le causó muchas dificultades en su vida diaria. Está aquí su hija para testificar que es cierto de que ellos tenían una vida difícil debido a este problema de dificultad para caminar que su madre estaba enfrentando. Pero luego de venir y recibir oración del hombre de Dios, ella removió su corsé lumbar y comenzó a caminar para lograr a Jesucristo. Continuamos.
just before um, Mother goes, we just want to see that demonstration of how she can walk freely, move freely now that she is healed. Emmanuel, before I cannot walk like this. I cannot walk like this at all. Even I can run. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All things are passed away. All things become new. Vimos cómo esta mujer camina ahora libremente para la gloria de Dios. Luego de recibir su sanidad, ya no utiliza más corsé lumbar, ya no tiene más problemas lumbar y ya no tiene más dificultad para caminar en el nombre de Jesús. Nos hemos visto cómo esta mujer ha demostrado cómo ella podía marchar, correr en la gloria de Dios. Ella es liberada y guérida por la gloria de Dios. Continúe a mirar los testimonios. Happened. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. Out. I command you, unclean spirits, you spirits of lust, out of this body in the name of Jesus. That demon tormenting you, tormenting your future, out in the name of Jesus Christ. Today you are disconnected. You are free in Jesus' name. Libre en el nombre de Jesús. A un problema que ya está sufriendo en sus articulaciones de la rodilla. Libre en el nombre de Jesús. That's what is happening. But you are free right now. Okay, you are going to do that. But you have to stop this thing that you are watching. Because it's influencing your thoughts. Today you are delivered. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. Shall we put our hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ? So the man is coming into our midst to share with us what the Lord Jesus Christ has done in his life through the minister of God. Prayed for him who had a problem in his life and now is completely free. So you are very welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, introduce yourself and share with us your testimony. Good morning, people of God. My name is Aret Sonzulu from Zambia. The problem that brought me here to the Synagogue Church of All Nation was difficult in Hawking due to knee dislocation. I had a lot of challenges due to this knee dislocation. I had difficult in walking. Even just going to the toilet I had the challenge. Sometimes I could even just to say I won't even eat a lot of food because I used to find it a very challenging going to the toilet. It has affected my life. Even walking a very distance, I could find it very painful. Even just walking a distance, I could, it would just come out from the position. So it affected my life so badly. So that's when I started watching Emmanuel TV and said, no, I have to visit. People have been delivered. People have been healed. So that's how I visited Emmanuel, the Synagogue Church of Foreign Nation. Then I had the privilege of being put on the prayer line. Then I was, when I was put on the prayer line, the woman of God touched me and prayed for me. So I felt that lightning in me. Well, since then, then, she told me, rise up and walk. Then I was able to walk. So I thank God for what he has done for my life. Are people listening to you want to get the picture of what you are saying? You said when the woman of God came and she touched you. Tell us what happened. Uh, when the woman of God came, before she even came, I could feel that lightning. The moment she touched me, I felt that striking lightning in me. Since then, all that pain, I couldn't feel it anymore. Mm. Shall we put our hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ? So what are the things you can do now that you could not do then because of this problem? I can able to walk now. I can able to run. That I could, if just walking a distance, like, like if just a few minutes, I could feel the pain. But now I can run. Now I can do some exercise. I can twist my leg in any position. But before now, you could not because the leg used to pull out. Yes, it used to come out from the position. If I walk, it will come out from the position. But since the woman of God prayed for you, all the pains are gone. The Everything leg is in normal is position, no longer feel... pulling out of the position. 
everything is gone. I don't feel any dislocation. I'm just perfect now. Okay. And for how long have you been having that problem? I've been having this problem a year now. Mm. Shall we put our hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ? Okay, could you just exercise yourself and do those things you could not do then? Whoa. <laughs> so you mean before now you could not do all of this? No, I could not do this. If I do this, it will come out from the provision. I have to fall down. But as you were doing it, how did you feel then? I, I feel best. I feel nice now. No longer pain? No longer pain now. Okay. So tell us more about what happened when the woman of God prayed for you. When the man of God prayed for me, I, I felt just light, lightning. I felt that power. I felt the lightning in me. And tell us what else did the woman of God said to you after she touched you? After she touched me, she said I should stop watching what I like watching on the phone. So that means the woman of God gave you a message of prophecy? Yes. Oh, so tell us what she said. She said I should stop watching what I like watching on the phone. I confirmed the prophecy to be true because I could not spend a day without being on the phone watching pornography. Mm. Mm. So tell us what happened after she gave you that message of prophecy and she prayed for you. Uh, what happened after she prayed for me, she gave me that prophecy. I no longer watch that thing anymore. It's gone. My past is gone. Oh, shall we put our hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ? You mean after the, ma after the woman of God prayed for you, gave you that message of prophecy, that you should stop watching what you love watching. And she prayed for you. The urge to watch pornography naturally went out of your life. Yes, it totally went out of my life. When I went back, I couldn't even, I could be free because I was addicted. Like I could hold the phone all the day watching such. But now I can stay all day without that phone, been watching anything. Mm. And tell us how this deliverance, because you said you came for healing. And not only did you receive the healing, you have additional blessings of God in form of message of prophecy and deliverance. So tell us how this deliverance has impacted your life, how it has helped your life. It has helped my life because now I can walk, I can do all those things which I couldn't do by then. How, how has the deliverance helped your life? It has helped me my life spiritually because I've given myself to Christ. I can find my time to God, I can have time for God. Because by then, I couldn't have time for God. I was busy on the phone. But now, I can meditate. I can dedicate myself to God. I can pray. Thank God that at least I have myself to God. I can give myself to Christ. Mm. We give glory to God. <clears throat> and we know that evidence of Christ's miracle is a life change. So what word of advice do you have for people listening to you, most especially those that may be indulging in the heart of watching pornography and those who are in such condition of sickness and affliction before your deliverance? My advice to viewers out there is uh, please dedicate yourself to God and stop watching such because it, it, it destroys our destiny, it destroys our future. So when you give yourself to Christ, all things will move smoothly. Mm. We thank you for your word of advice, and we thank God for the deliverance the Lord has done in your life. We want to encourage you. Now the Lord has healed you for the salvation of your soul. You should treasure his word in your heart today and forever in Jesus' name. Porque la era de los milagros aún no ha pasado. Acabamos de escuchar un maravilloso testimonio de sanidad. Este hombre nos cuenta que se presentó a la sinagoga iglesia y a todas las naciones el domingo pasado con dificultad para caminar debido a una herida y un problema en su pierna. Él nos dice que en el momento en que la mujer de Dios oró por él también le dio un mensaje profético en el que le dijo que él debía dejar de ver lo que él solía ver, que él estaba adicto a ver pornografía, lo cual él confirma porque él nos dice que en su celular las 24 horas estaba viendo videos Y nos dice que después de esa palabra profética, él recibió su sanidad y también recibió su liberación. Aconseja a todas las personas que confíen en Dios, porque con Dios todas las cosas son posibles. Monsieur Redson Zulu es un hombre que regardait Emmanuel TV chez lui y il a eu un problema pour marcher, il avait des difficultés pour marcher. Cela dû a une dislocation. Donc, il est venu a la synagogue, église de toutes les nations, y la 
servante de Dieu, a prié pour lui. Lorsqu'elle a prié pour lui, il a reçu sa guérison et sa délivrance. Elle lui a aussi donné une parole prophétique disant qu'il avait des mauvaises habitudes et qu'il regardait des films euh, pornographiques et qu'il avait un esprit de luxure. Donc il a reçu une délivrance et il a reçu une guérison. Il est venu aujourd'hui pour rendre toute la gloire à Dieu. Il dit que comme conseil aux téléspectateurs du monde entier de cesser de faire des actes qui ne glorifient pas le nom de Dieu parce que regarder des films qui, euh, pornographiques euh, font en sorte qu'il puisse s'éloigner du chemin que Dieu a tracé pour lui. Nous rendons gloire à Dieu pour sa vie. Continuez de regarder les témoignages en direct de la synagogue église de toutes les nations. Once again, shall we put our hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ? That was a wonderful, wonderful testimony from the man giving thanks to God Almighty. But one thing we want us to take from the testimony of the man is that not only did God heal them, the Lord also delivered him so that his relationship with God can be strengthened. Because he said he was dedicated to worship pornography. He said there's no day that go by without him watching. But not only did the Lord heal him, God Almighty used the woman of God to also tell him about that thing that is hidden in his life that he has been doing secretly, that is watching pornography, and the woman of God prayed for him, delivered him from that spirit, and he said, indeed, he was truly delivered. Because the urge to watch pornography has completely gone out of his life and is now completely free to worship God in spirit and in truth, and we give glory to God Almighty for what he has done. I believe anywhere you are all around the world, and for those who are in the auditorium, you are also ready to receive all of God's blessing. Tell your neighbor, I'm ready. To receive all of his blessings. Para recibir las bendiciones de Dios. Je suis prêt. Dites à votre voisin. Je suis prêt à recevoir des bénédictions de Dieu. Dites-le dans la gloire de Dieu. Queremos animar a todas las personas que mientras están esperando el siguiente testimonio continúen en una actitud de oración. Recuerden que así como ese testimonio ha transformado la vida de los demás, también transformará la suya. Así que prepárese para recibir su sanidad, su liberación y su bendición en el nombre de Jesús. Continuez de méditer dans votre cœur, ô oh Saint-Esprit, prends plus de moi, donne-moi plus de toi, car les témoignages que nous regardons ici, en direct de la synagogue, église de toutes les nations, sont des témoignages qui sont présents pour fortifier notre foi. Continuez de méditer dans votre cœur, ouvrez votre cœur et demandez à Dieu dans votre cœur ce que vous voulez, afin qu'il puisse vous exaucer selon ses désirs, selon sa volonté, dans la gloire de Dieu. So, we should be ready, we have more people that want to share with us the wonderful testimonies of what God has done in their lives and we have seen and we have heard and you should, you should be ready with an open heart to receive the blessings that God Almighty has in stock for you today. Tell your neighbor, I'm ready to receive all of God's blessings that he has in stock for me today. Remember today is your day of encounter with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to put an end to all those things that has become a thorn in your flesh, that has become a torment in your life. So with an open heart, you should be ready. These are testimony to strengthen you. And for those who are still thinking, will it be possible for God to set me free, to deliver me, to heal me? You have listened to wonderful testimony. The man said he only came for healing because he was having problem with his knee dislocation for one year. You are sitting freely. The man said he could not sit freely because if he sit down, the knee will pull out. So if you have not said thank you, Jesus, today, you should say so because you are sitting freely. So tell your neighbor, thank you, Jesus, that I'm sitting freely and I'm in the presence of God to receive all of his blessings. Shall we put our hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ once again? Dile a la persona que tienes a tu lado, gracias, Jesús. Dile a la persona a la que tienes a tu lado, hoy va a ser el día de tu transformación, el día de tu bendición, el día de tu milagro y el día de tu sanidad. Así como escuchamos este último testimonio, este hombre vino con un problema en el que él no podía sentarse, él no podía hacer sus actividades diarias, pero tú estás aquí caminando, sentándote y actuando libremente para la gloria de Dios. Así que sabemos que hoy también es el día de tu testimonio y recuerda que donde sea que estés, la distancia no es una barrera. Pendant que vous êtes assis, continuez de méditer dans votre cœur. Ô oh Saint-Esprit de Dieu, prends plus de moi, donne-moi plus de toi. Vous avez vu le témoignage précédent. Cet homme est venu à la synagogue, église de toutes les nations, dû à un problème de genou, disloqué. Donc il est venu, il a reçu sa délivrance et il dit que 
depuis sa délivrance, il ne regarde plus de films pornographiques et son esprit est libre. Il a reçu sa délivrance, il a reçu sa guérison pour le salut de son âme. Vous aussi, pendant que vous êtes assis, recevez vos déli- vous allez recevoir vos délivrances pour la gloire de Dieu. Continuez de méditer dans votre cœur. Vous recevrez votre délivrance pour le salut de votre âme dans le nom puissant de Jésus. Yes, you are going to continue listening to the testimony, but this testimony you're about to listen to is a very unique one, and uh, it, it, has, it was born through revelation. And the couple you are seeing here, they received a wonderful revelation concerning the Synagogue Church of All Nations and our Father in the Lord, Prophet T.B. Joshua, and they believed even without stepping their foot here. This is actually their first time of coming here. And uh, they had received so much wonderful testimonies in their lives, and they decided to come down here and share that testimony. And they had such great faith in the God of Prophet T.B. Joshua, and the husband who had been bedridden and was told that he would not be able to walk, just through watching Emmanuel TV and praying with the man of God on the screen, he received his healing. And to God be the glory, they are standing right here full of joy and happiness because the Lord has solved their problem. You know, the Bible says if you have faith, even if it's as small as a mustard seed, you can move your mountain. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. And to receive without even seeing, it takes great faith. And we thank God for that faith that they have been given through the grace of God to come here and also share their testimony. Those of you that are sitting down here watching them and listening to them, imagine the blessing God has in store for you. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So, Madam, we welcome you, and sir, we welcome you to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Please start by telling us your names and where you come from. Emmanuel, my name is Jerkanai, and I came from Karakal, Pakistan, with my husband. Uh, and uh, my name is Mansur. I came from Karakal, Pakistan. Мен кішкене кезімнен бастап видение көретін едім. Арслан сақалымен сондай лев орша айтқанда. И постоянно ол жақсы сілерді істейтін еді. И бір кішкене қызды хаме уақыт жұбату үші еді. И мен постоянно қиналған кезімде мен көзімнің алдында сол көрініс тұратын еді. Что менің әкем бар сондай Африкада деп. When I was a child, I was a little girl, and I saw a vision of a lion in Africa who was very kind, and he loved me, and he comforted me every time. And I, I had a dream that one day I will come to Africa, and it is my uh, father in the Lord. I was a lot of pain, and I was a kid, 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 and I when I began to uh, watch uh, DVDs of Prophet T.B. Joshua, my life began to change, and uh, there was lots of healings and deliverance in my family. Пророк тебе Джошва Архала. И мне на сенем Моданда к шей постада. И якому он через YouTube мен Эммануэл ТВ каналом Трауалдом сожерде был Кудайдом Магамберген Джанебр видение с Болда, что 
через прикосновение экран колонда хойб и селение алатн. Имя кунде хойб колонда и селение алатн. Брахмен киум харс волатн. In 2018, I uh, found out uh, the, about, about Emmanuel TV, and I began to pray with Prophet Tibi Joshua, and I was healed, and uh, my members of my family was, were also healed. And I, I also called my members of my family to pray with Prophet Tibi Joshua and touch the screen. И бркуна был мен икомыс обследование колдак медицинский, потому что менде уже узгерс постада коп. I had lots of diseases, but one day when I went to a medical checkup, I felt that something happened and I was healed. And me and my husband we went to the hospital. Икомс бреги обследование колган кизде маганай буганай ты сизн айелингиз. And I, I had lots of medical checkups, and doctors said they confirmed that I totally was healed, and I was really, really delivered. What was the problem? What was the uh, when I was a child, I had um, problems with my blood, and I also I had a um, tumor in my brain. They said that it is a cancer. I had a really deep depression. And always we, we argued with my husband. And when I began to pray with Prophet Tibi Joshua through a screen, touching the screen, and um, I was healed, and uh, my dream came true. My vision from my childhood that I will come to someday. I will come to Africa. It really fulfilled. Okay. What's your question? Uh, there were deliverance of my son's life. He was really disobedient. He watched pornography. He was dating lots of girls. And also he had chronic sore throat. He had allergies. And he was temperature when my son had a fever, a uh, 41 uh, fever uh, of degree, and we began to touch the screen with Prophet Tibi Joshua, and we began to pray. Because when he took medications, he had allergy. But my husband was against. He said, oh, our son is dying, so we need... And my husband was against of prayer with Prophet Tibi Joshua touching the screen. He said, please call the ambulance and we need to rescue our son. And so, when he was in the house, he was in the house. 
after the praying and touching the prophet to be Joshua a prayer I, he, my son began to vomit there was like uh, poisonous substances was coming out and he vomited a lot and right away his fever just slowed down and uh, my son's faith began to grow put your hands together wonderfully So indeed, we thank God, and this is evidence of what you're seeing on the screen of your television. That is one of the sons there who was healed of a severe allergy, and he vomited out all the poisonous substances after praying with the man of God, Prophet Tibi Joshua. And rightly, she said the husband who is standing next to her during that time did not have any faith or belief in the prayer of Prophet Tibi Joshua. But she persisted and said, no, let him pray touch the screen and pray and that was how he was healed instead of being driven in an ambulance to the hospital for a, an emergency treatment to god be the glory so right now can we hear from your husband uh, uh, when we received from someone in 2013 the DVDs of Prophet Tibi Joshua, it uh, named uh, Miracles in Nigeria. That moment of time, I didn't know about Prophet Tibi Joshua, but I just read the name of, this, of that DVD, Miracles in Nigeria. But I didn't believe, but I began to spread all the DVDs uh, to sick people. And I mean, in ministry, uh, in local church, so it, I didn't believe myself, but in any way, I thought that it is my obligation, it's my resp responsibility to spread these miracles, to God's uh, works, to other people to be healed. Even I didn't believe myself. So in 2014, we had uh, marital problems in our family. I committed adultery and I hurt my uh, wife. Uh, I was a really bad husband. I was hiding all this my sins from her and I didn't know what to do with that. I thought that I will hide all these things in, my, in secret and I will die and I will take with all these secrets with me. So I had so many problems and my business also was collapsed totally. So so in one day, I was in my last best stop. I need to tell, to confess all my sins. So he, uh, he brought me to that point that I need to confess. So it, uh, it was a, uh, God's word, work. So in 2018, when my wife found, uh, found uh, Emmanuel TV, she told me to uh, listen and to watch this TV. Uh, she watched a lot and lots of changes happened in her life. Every time when I was in my work, 
uh, she sent me all, every, uh, all things from Emmanuel TV uh, about the prayer of Prophet Tobi Joshua. I was mocking her and I didn't believe in all that things. And she had a vision from her childhood that one day she will go to Africa. And one day she, she told that I will uh, I I found my father in the Lord. He's African. His name is Prophet Tibi Joshua. And she said that he's my father of the, uh, in the Lord. I was against of all her words about Prophet Tibi Joshua. When children were, were sick, I was against, but she was, uh, she told to children to touch the screen and be healed, and really, it really happened, and they were healed. I didn't like all that things. In 2018, when I was in my work, uh, I fall down, uh, I'm a builder, so I fall down from the second floor on the floor totally. So my back was broken in three places. I was hospitalized and doctor said you need you must be uh, operated and that you will be paralyzed for one year. This is uh, I'm in the hospital. So I was against of the operation. After five days, I came home. And that moment of my life, I didn't have a choice. And I began to, I was totally crushed. Everything was gone, and so I began to pray with Prophet Tobi Joshua, touching the screen with Emmanuel Tobi with viewers. So Yeah, one day when I touched the screen, I began to vomit. Uh, also, I was broken spiritually. Uh, my back was broken and I was spiritually broken. Uh, but, after, uh, but I began, I continued to touch the screen and pray with Prophet Tibi Joshua. And after 15 days, I walk, I began, I stood up and I began to walk. Let's put our hands together wonderfully. So tell us, sir, during that time that the doctors told you that you cannot walk anymore, and uh, you were confined to the bed and you were about to be operated, but you were afraid of the operation. Tell us, how did this period change you? What now brought you to realize that you needed to pray? Was Pray with the man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua. Was it because you had no other choice or you had started believing in the God of Prophet T.B. Joshua? Ушул 
I was suffering a lot and I understood that it was disobedience, spiritual disobedience. From that day, uh, we began to worship with Emmanuel TV and uh, we, we began to pray with Prophet TV Joshua. We watch Emmanuel TV all the day and uh, seven days in a week. And uh, when people were, they were coming to, into our house, we uh, turned on uh, the, our TV and they also prayed with Prophet. Glory be to God that God changed my family and He healed us and I have a peace. The main thing that I have a peace in my heart. Let's put our hands together wonderfully for our Lord Jesus Christ. And I hope that this testimony you've listened to has been a wonderful experience for you because like the man of God rightly says that Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship. It is not about the works we do. It is about the relationship we maintain. You can hear from the man, he said, even though as a, a man that was into ministry, he was helping to share the DVD of the prophet because it was an obligation. Not because he believed that the man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua, was sent by God. He was just doing it as an obligation for his local church. But glory be to God, the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ brought him to his knees to realize that he needed to have a relationship with him. And that was what now propelled that healing to take place. Because he had been spiritually disobedient. And we thank God that he has come to realize himself. And God Almighty has put that peace of heart, security of God's presence, assurance of life, and ease of heart to his life in Jesus' name. So, thank you, sir. And um, can we speak to your wife once more? So tell us, Ma, what is your advice to people who are watching you right now? Siz kaysil kengesh bermek siz bardak dünyada görüşülürgü. Ben barlak adamlar gaytar edim, senüşe adamlar gaytar edim, işte Emanuel TV'da bu hakikat tırı kuday, sol jirde hakikattan da asabajdeyine veredir, azatlık veredir. Prorok TV Joshua arkayı Umrlerimizden gözgergenin hakikat i ulardın da körü un kaler edin, i ulardın da şpata un kaler edin. I onun barlıq sözün umrımde oranda uğa i ular da onun sözü, tırı söz eken, kudaydan alğan sözü, hakikat eken, tastiklayman. I want to advise uh, all the people and viewers of the, over the world and believers and non-believers that our God is alive and the prophet, uh, God of Prophet T.B. Joshua, he is miracle-working God and that he changes lives and he, there is all the deliverance, healings and changes in our life is really real, real. And I uh, call everybody just to believe in all that miracles and uh, this ministry. Thank you. Let's put our hands together wonderfully. And sir, can you now show us what you can do that you could not do before because of this um, problem you had that uh, paralyzed you and you couldn't walk, you were on the bed. Tell us what are the things that you can do now and tell us the things you could not do before and demonstrate to us. Азыр сиз көрсөтүп бериңиз, мурдак эмне кыла албачыңыз? А азыр эмне кандай баса аласыз, эмне кыласыз? Ошону сиз көрсөтүп бериңиз. Да, мен мурун отуруп туруум кыйын эле, и жүрүүм кыйын эле. Микрофон да алып. Микрофон. А. Архай отуруп тал. 
I can sit like this. I can run. I can bend. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. And we want to advise you that receiving healing is not the only thing you need. You also need to continue to cast aside your old self and taking the new life in Christ Jesus, as we all know that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. So let God continue to order your steps, and it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Nous voyons ce couple qui vient du Karakal Pakistan. Donc, ce jeune couple est venu euh, dû à, la, à une vision que l'épouse a eue. Elle a eu une vision quand elle était enfant, qu'elle viendrait un jour en Afrique. Et donc, euh, en 2001, elle a commencé à regarder le DVD du prophète Sibi Joshua, qu'elle a porté chez elle et qu'elle a montré à son époux. En 2018, elle a prié avec le prophète Sibi Joshua et elle a touché l'écran parce qu'elle souffrait de nombreuses maladies depuis qu'elle était jeune. Elle avait une tumeur au, au cerveau, elle avait aussi un problème au niveau de son sang, elle souffrait de dépression. Et donc, après les prières de l'homme de Dieu au travers de son écran, le prophète Tibi Joshua, elle a reçu une guérison et elle a pu être délivrée de toutes les maladies qu'elle avait. Aujourd'hui, son rêve d'enfant s'est réalisé parce qu'elle a pu venir au Nigeria, elle a pu mettre les pieds pour la première fois en Afrique et au Nigeria et enfin réaliser son rêve d'enfant. Elle dit que son mari souffrait d'allergie, qu'elle avait un fils qui était dépendant aux drogues et dépendant aux films pornographiques. Elle a donc demandé à son fils de prier avec le prophète Tibi Joshua en touchant l'écran, alors que son époux suggérait à son fils d'appeler une ambulance. Heureusement pour la gloire de Dieu, son fils a écouté sa mère et a prié avec le prophète Tibi Joshua en touchant l'écran et il a pu vomir des substances toxiques. Son mari a pris la parole en disant qu'au début, en 2001, lorsqu'il a reçu les DVD du prophète Tibi Joshua, il ne croyait pas du tout en ce qu'il voyait à la télé et que pour lui, euh, malgré le fait qu'il soit dans le ministère euh, chrétien, il ne croyait pas au prophète au miracle qui était exercé par le prophète Sibi Joshua. Ensuite, il a avoué qu'il a eu des affaires extramaritales et donc qu'il avait des problèmes au niveau de son couple et que il, ses problèmes s'empiraient parce qu'il n'avait pas avoué à sa femme qu'il avait eu une affaire extramaritale et qu'il avait aussi des problèmes au niveau de son business, au niveau de ses affaires. Et donc, en gros, il s'enfonçait dans ses... Des, dans les ténèbres. Un jour, il a donc dû confesser ses péchés parce qu'il a vu qu'il n'y avait plus aucune solution. Il a prié avec Emmanuel TV et il a vu que sa vie a été transformée pour la gloire de Dieu. Il dit que sa femme priait aussi avec Emmanuel TV et que donc ils ont partagé sa, la vision de venir en Afrique. Il est venu aussi une, une, un jour aujourd'hui en Afrique. Il est heureux d'être ici. Il a dit qu'il a eu un accident où il est tombé et il s'est fracturé le dos en trois endroits différents et qu'il était au bout du tunnel. Il ne savait plus quoi faire et que c'est à cet instant qu'il a vu la lumière et qu'il a prié, il s'est soumis à la volonté de Dieu et qu'il a prié avec le prophète Sibu Joshua en touchant l'écran. Lorsqu'il l'a fait, il s'est levé par la gloire de Dieu, il a reçu son miracle et il était guéri. Il dit que depuis ce jour, son conseil pour les téléspectateurs est d'obéir à la volonté de Dieu. Obéir est la clé, l'obéissance est la clé. Et que malgré le fait qu'il soit dans le ministère, il refusait de croire que le prophète Sibu Joshua était un prophète envoyé par Dieu. Il rend toute la gloire à Dieu et le conseil de sa femme dit que notre Dieu est vivant et qu'il change les vies, il change les nations et il change le monde et que notre Dieu est un Dieu qui fait des miracles pour la gloire de Dieu. Continuez à regarder les témoignages pour la gloire de Dieu. Parce que certainement la distance n'est no pas une barrière, nous allons écouter un testimonio très puissant et cette pareja nous cuenta, ils viennent de Caracapastán et ils nous disent que eh, ils eh, recibieron en en el 2013 recibieron videos del profeta Tibi Joshua. Ellos nos cuentan que por responsabilidad de la iglesia, este hombre estaba repartiendo estos DVDs a las personas enfermas, sin embargo, él no creía en lo que estaba repartiendo. La mujer que se encuentra a su lado, su esposa, nos cuenta que cuando era muy pequeña, ella tuvo una visión en la que vio a un león en África con una barba muy grande, orando por personas enfermas que se, así, que se estaban sanando y desde entonces ella deseó visitar África para poder conocer qué era lo que Dios le estaba mostrando en ese 
ese sueño Ella nos dice que cuando ella vio esos DVDs empezó a orar con el profeta TV Joshua a través de Manuel TV Y ella tenía un problema, un tumor cerebral y también tenía un problema en su sangre Ella nos dice que oraba fervientemente con el hombre de Dios y ella recibió su sanidad Ella junto a su esposo fueron al doctor, ellos, medica, ellos hicieron los análisis, ellos hicieron todos los exámenes y eh, todos los exámenes salieron completamente negativos Ella ya no tenía cáncer ni tenía tumor cerebral Y ella también nos cuenta que su hijo estaba presentando problemas de salud Que también tenía un problema de adicción a la pornografía Tenía depresión y tenía una fiebre muy alta En la cual los medicamentos que estaba tomando le estaban dando alergia Pero ella también aconsejó a su hijo a que orara junto al profeta TV Joshua E inmediatamente él puso su mano sobre la pantalla Él empezó a vomitar, recibió su liberación y su sanidad, sin embargo en ese tiempo el esposo no creía en lo que el hombre de Dios eh, estaba haciendo, no creía en las oraciones del profeta TV Joshua y ese hombre nos cuenta por su lado que sus negocios estaban estancados, que no estaba contento, no vivía tranquilo, sin embargo nos cuenta que él como es eh, constructor, él estaba en un segundo piso de una edificación y él se cayó, lo que hizo una... Eh, una Fractura en su columna vertebral, los doctores lo llevaron inmediatamente, le dijeron que tenía que someterse a cirugía Lo cual este hombre se rehusó por temor y él decidió regresar a la casa Los doctores le dijeron que él nunca más podría volver a caminar y que si se operaba tenía que estar hospitalizado un año Este hombre nos dice que sin ninguna otra alternativa oró junto al profeta TV Joshua por Emanuel TV y recibió su sanidad Así que vemos cómo esta familia fue completamente transformada a través de eh, orar junto al profeta TV Joshua porque la distancia no es una barrera También vimos las fotografías en pantalla como ellos y su familia fueron libres Cada uno fueron libres y sanos y hoy están aquí compartiéndole a todas las personas Que el Dios de TV Joshua es un Dios que transforma vidas y transformó su familia Y aconseja a todos que recuerden que la distancia no es una barrera, continuamos sets and see how it all happened. God Almighty continues to use the faculties of the woman of God to break the yoke in the lives of the people, setting them free from the bondage of Satan. As the light of God descends on this woman, she begins to manifest. It's destroyed! We destroyed it! We! Nothing. Okay, who are you? You have a name. Who are you in this body? I said we are combined forces. Okay, how did I come? How did I come? Yeah. Who is this? Estamos viendo la manifestación de espíritus malignos. My wife. Yes. She's very aggressive. She's very aggressive and very wicked. How did I come? From both families. Right now, you spirit husband, out of this body, out, out, you unclean spirits, I command you. Vemos la manifestación de un esposo espiritual, espíritu de hombre y esta mujer es libre en el nombre de Jesús. You are free, but you know we need to congratulate this man. You need to say sorry, because if not God, this home would have been a broken home by now. We need to congratulate this man. He endured a lot of things. And you know, you are delivered from this cause because that same spirit tormenting you is in the house. But today you are delivered. Today you are free. God bless you. But that congratulation, you are free, okay? We look forward to hear your testimony. It is well, okay? That was how it happened. And now we want to listen to her directly, what the Lord has done for her through this wonderful deliverance in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So before you share with us your wonderful testimony, can you kindly 
Introduce yourself. My name is Matilda. The man standing beside me is my husband. Last week, I was here with the issue of marital problem, and I was delivered. And I want to use this opportunity to thank God for my deliverance. Before I came here, for seven years of our marriage, we have been fighting. I've been fighting my husband all the time. I was like the man in the house. I thought I was wiser than my husband, that I would always argue with him. I was so aggressive that I would insult my husband. I can even slap him. There were instances where my mother-in-law came to live with us, and I was, I was so rude to her. I did not take her as my mother. I fought her to the extent that I even insulted my own mother-in-law. Then she's 70 years plus. And as a result, she left our home. This anger increased by the day. To the extent that when I get angry, I vent my anger on my little children. My first one is six and the second one is four years old. Those, I could beat them so badly. And there was a little girl that was brought to me to help us in the house. I could beat this little girl so badly that she could get cuts on her body until I see blood on her before I will become. So, as it went on like that, my husband's work started to decline. It went down and down. He even put me to school. You know, he realized that I wasn't happy staying at home. So, he wanted me to, you know, for showing me love, that he loves me, he put me to school. And it, I wasn't satisfied. I was just not satisfied. I would compare myself to my friends, my colleagues outside, because they are working and on social media. I go on social media, check their status, WhatsApp status with photos and all that. It would affect me. When my husband comes back from work, instead of receiving him, I would be so angry with him. I'll fight him. You should let me work and all that. It became a whole lot of issue. So it got to a point that, as I was saying, that his work continued going down. Nothing went or to the extent that we, my husband could not fend for my, my children's school fees. We started begging before we eat and all that. Even with that, he managed to keep the home together. But it got to a point, just this December, we, we had nothing. We, we just had nothing. Our house that we were living in, we had overstayed for seven months. We were owing rent. They were sacking us. And at that point, I got angry at him again. I was shouting at him, insulting him. And he just could not take it anymore. So he asked me to, go, to leave. And when I left, I left and then I wanted a solution. At that point in time, the, my husband asked me, I did not care. I was ready to leave. The only thing that I was thinking about was the children, what I was doing, I was going to do with them. But as time went by, January came, and then I was thinking, I was sober. By then I was sober, so I was always thinking, reflecting on the things, just asking myself whether I, this is what I really wanted. So I needed help. My family members had always intervened and the issues had aggravated, so nobody was actually interested in our issues anymore. Everybody was fed up. So I needed help. I wrote to the church 
asking for help. By God's grace, I was invited to come. So when I came, I've been here all the time. And um, that faithful day, Sunday, b- before the woman of God got to me, she was just two seats away from me. And I, at that point, I was pressed. I wanted to use the, wor- the washroom that even if I breathed, I thought I would just mess myself, but I decided to stay. And I was so angry with everybody around me that I started, you know, cursing the woman of God in my heart that this woman is just a little girl and all that. But when she came to me and touched me, I don't know what happened. I was saying things. It was when I got up and I heard her say, that, uh, woman, you are free, you are delivered. That is when... I came to my, that I had to apologize to my husband, that if not for God, this home would have been destroyed. Yes, truly, it's it's true. And I really thank God for my deliverance and the deliverance of my marriage. I also want to use this opportunity to also thank my, uh, thank my, ask for forgiveness from my husband because I have caused him so much embarrassment, and it has affected him. He's no more, he, he's no more a man, you know. He's, as a man providing for the family, taking care of us, he's so selfless. He will give us everything and not buy anything for himself. But after my, that's after my deliverance that I have realized all this, at first I would justify everything. I would justify my actions. I thank God. But after the deliverance, you realize that there's been a being in you that was propelling you to do all of this that is affecting your marriage, affecting everybody around you. Yes. It's now that I've realized that this demon has really destroyed me and my home. So go by, going by what you have said, we want to watch the, clip, the clips again. How the deliverance took place in your life. Because you have said so much about the havoc that this evil spirit has done in your marriage. So let us watch again and see how the deliverance took place in her life before she continues. She only realized that all what she has done are things she should not do after the deliverance. Even when the, man, the woman of God was coming close to her for the deliverance, so she became extremely angered with people all around him. And she felt pressed as if she should just leave the auditorium to his herself. But the grace of God kept her and immediately the woman of God touched her. She said she fell under the influence of the power of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God delivered her from that evil spirit that is destroying her marriage. God Almighty continues to use the faculties of the woman of God to break the yoke in the lives of the people, setting them free from the bondage of Satan. As the light of God descends on this woman, she begins to manifest. It's destroyed! We destroyed it! We! She's nothing! I said we are combined forces. Estamos viendo la manifestación de espíritus malignos. She's very aggressive. She's very aggressive and very wicked. From both families. Right now, your spirit to husband, out of this body, out, out. You unclean spirits, I command you. Vemos la manifestación de un esposo espiritual. You are free. Espíritu de hombre y esta mujer. In Jesus' name. Libre en el nombre de Jesús. You are free. But you know, we need to congratulate this man. You need to say sorry. Because if not God, this home would have been a broken home by now. We need to congratulate this man. He endured a lot of things. And you know you are delivered from this cause because that same spirit tormenting you is in the house.
But today you are delivered. Today you are free. God bless you. But that congratulations, you are free. Okay? We look forward to hear your testimony. It is well, okay? Hmm. We have seen it once again. And from the clips we have watched, you can see that demons, evil spirit, are responsible for the enormous pain that people are experiencing and the divorce that is increasing in the society all around the world. Uh, let us hear from the husband of the woman. We want to hear from him directly what he has to say about what the condition of, was worse then before they came in here to, in the Synagogue Church of All Nations for deliverance. Good morning, church. Emmanuel. 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 My name is Senan Vojogwe. This is my first son, Mauli Vojogwe. Mauli means God is alive. And this is Kakeli Vojogwe. Kakeli is uh, the presence, the light of God. I, I am an electrical engineer. The woman standing by my right is my wife. Since I've known my wife, when I met her, she was very calm. You can even see her. Her presence alone brings peace. So it wasn't difficult in taking the decision to marry her. Unknown to me, there were issues, as you have seen through the deliverance. As soon as I took the decision to marry my wife, I'm robbers raided my house and stole everything away. By then, I was in the north. We had already planned the marriage, so the marriage must go on unabated. I married her, came back from the north with nothing. And throughout our marriage, it has been one problem or the other. Never been involved in an accident in my life. But when I took the decision to go and see her people to marry her, on our way, our car was involved in an accident three times. Uh, eventually, we had to go with a taxi. And the family, we had to divide the family into three. They all took taxis to the venue. By the time we got there, the pastors had left. They were tired and they left. Fortunately for us, we brought our own pastor. After the marriage, what I noticed was that he was possessed with this anger. And all she wanted to do is to deplete my funds. And um, she doesn't want me to work also. So I'll be at work and she'll call me that I should come home. What sort of useless work am I engaging? I would come home, and she's still fighting me. The marriage was like uh, I was put in a slave ship that was heading nowhere. Imagine being in a dark room, and you don't know where you are going. That was what uh, it was all about. Our first fight happened when uh, we had to move in. As I said earlier, I'm Robert stole my stuff, and... We had to move in with the sister, who then had a big uh, accommodation. So my part was to provide for the house, the entire house, including the sister, whilst the sister pays the rent. I was doing that quite well, and there was an, an issue between me and my wife. Um, the mom came in, and the issue aggravated, and uh, I had to apologize to the wife. On my way to see the mom, I was involved in an accident. Again, eventually when I got to the venue, the mom and my wife's other brother prevented me from entering their home at 1 a.m. In fact, the brother was holding a pump ashy gun. So I had to sleep in a filling station with my driver. But as a son of the synagogue church of all nation, I knew it was my duty to still apologize to the woman, even if I've wronged her or not. So I still went ahead to apologize to her. So we know you have so much to say. But we just want you at this point to zero it down to the impact of this spiritual husband, this unclean spirit, is, uh, is the havoc this evil spirit has wreaked in your family and how it affected you as a person, affected your children and everyone around you. Yeah, I'll, I'll start with my work. With my work, eventually I lost my... My first job, I got a consultancy work with uh, Canadian Solar. I think they are the second largest in the world. I was their lead consultant in Ghana. 
and the project was $200 million. Because of our domestic issues, my wife's sister, other sister, wrote to them to cancel whatever engagement they have with me. And my, my part in that contract, my personal gain would have been $20 million, and I lost it, unfortunately. And moving ahead, I went for an interview with uh, IESL. I believe it's a Nigeria company. I was first out of about uh, 28 engineers. I got home and I told my wife, thinking she would be happy with me. She got angry. That was how I knew things were terrible. With her mother-in-law, she asked the mother-in-law to come and stay with us because I had sent her to the Regional Maritime University. Those who know Regional Maritime University, we pay in dollars. That's where she was attending school. So she needed the mother-in-law to take care of the kids while she went to school. She, one day she woke up and said she didn't want her to stay with us any longer. And she started starving the old woman. And the old woman wouldn't tell me anything. When I come home, because she doesn't want, uh, she doesn't want to be the one to destroy my home. So she'll be hungry. I will carry her in my car going around and she'll say, buy me banana, buy me this, buy me that. She's stocking food for the week because I'm not always at home. With the issue of the children, she was always on her phone. She doesn't cook. I've never come home to a good meal. I always come and prepare it to me, eat, and I'm not a demanding husband, so I, I, I don't see it as, as an issue anyway. So this is how her issues affected us. And this October, unfortunately, I lost my mom. And whilst my mom was in the mug, I was in Keta preparing for my mom's funeral. My wife now sent me a message that since I have money to bury my mother, She's adding this little one. His school is less expensive than this one. She's adding him to join him in school so that I will pay more. Since I have money to bury my mom, I should get money and pay for my kids' school fees, which is about $1,000. This spirit has caused a lot of havoc. In one instance, the elder brother came in, called me from America, threatened to kill me. And true to their word, they brought an anti-terrorist squad and my wife was leading the squad. I got an intuition that something was going to go wrong. So I parked my car behind uh, our house. And the dad also called me that he has picked an intelligence. He was a, a former police chief. That if anybody knocks my door and I open, if I die, it's my own problem. He has informed me. Around 11, my wife called. Hello, honey, I, I, I'm sorry. Whatever happened, it will happen again. And the police force was behind her. So I told her I wasn't at home. She went to my, my friend's place, went to the family house. Eventually, they didn't get me at, at, at home. So we, I started losing contract, started losing money. I eventually sold my car just to pay her school fees. This December, we couldn't even afford rent, so they asked us to leave. Waking up every morning to the cry of my my house girl, who has become my daughter, she's now my daughter, because she's in the same school with my kids. And they call her their elder sister. She will beat the girl, black and blue. And according to her, she doesn't want to see her in 2019. I said, well, if that is the case, we don't want to see you. Because the little kid treats these kids like the sister. She baths them, she cooks for them, she cleans the house. So I don't know your use. So if that is the case, then you should rather leave. So I asked her uh, to leave. Last two weeks, I was home when I got a call from the synagogue that I should be here. You have said so much. <laughs> uh, we, we thank God for what the Lord has done. We want to hear from you. How did you feel then when the woman of God came, touched her, and said to her that, spiritual husband and unclean spirit is responsible for the problem and the situation in the family. How did that make you feel as a husband? Because you also came out and confirmed that she's very violent. Yeah, yeah I, I wasn't surprised as a son of uh, the Synagogue Church of All Nations. I wasn't surprised. My regret is that I thought we thought we could do it by ourselves, uh, but it was bigger than us. So I am happy, finally, we made it here. Okay. And she's here. Uh, we, we know you have so much to tell us.
tell us, you, because you said during that time that she's a very violent woman. Can you just give us a little uh, clip, instance of how violent she has been in the past? Yeah, there, there was a time I was uh, driving on the speed test road after 10 p.m. The road was really free, so I was firing. And the issue of my former driver, you know, came up. She doesn't want to hear his name. Uh, because she had written letters to him, and the guy said, look, I've driven your husband around Ghana and beyond to work. He doesn't leave his hotel room. And so because of that truth, he just, she, does, she just doesn't want to see the driver. As soon as his name came up, my wife slapped me across the face. I was driving at 100 kilometers per hour and started biting me. And in order to free myself, I had to hit her on the ties before she felt the pain, before I quickly parked. And even that was an issue because they took it to the police headquarters again. I was home when the anti-terrorist and anti-trafficking unit of the Ghana uh, police force, head office, IGP's office called me that I was needed. And in all this time, four times we visited the police station, they always asked her to apologize to me. There was one instance she told me that uh, people had raised money for her to put me behind bars. And since that didn't materialize, I should give her the money to be paid to the people. And because of peace, I gave her, I gave her the money, 300 cities to pay to them so that I'll have peace. <laughs> well, we, we thank God for what the Lord has done. So what can you tell us? that you have noticed in the life of your wife after a deliverance on Sunday because you witnessed the deliverance. So what changes have you noticed in her? Yeah, I, I noticed her, her peace is, is back. Mm. Her peace, she, she used to be a, a choirista while we were in school. She was a CF member, very dedicated at what she does. As I said earlier, anytime she's around, there's peace. I noticed her peace is back. I initially, I didn't want to get closer to her. Even whilst we were here, even after she was delivered, throughout the week, I didn't want to have anything to do with her. But gradually, I noticed her peace is back. So now, uh, initially, she comes to look for me, but now I go to look for her. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we come back to you, but before then, let us hear more from her. During the course of the deliverance, the woman of God said, you are coming back for your testimony. So what do you have to say now? I want to use this opportunity to beg my husband. We're seeing reconciliation taking place in this family after the deliverance that, was, that took place here at the Synagogue Church of All Nations last Sunday by the woman of God. And we have listened to the woman sharing her experience, how that spiritual husband, the spirit of anger, have wreaked so much havoc in the family and the, the marriage is at the verge of divorce before this divine intervention of God Almighty. So let us hear from you. After the deliverance, what changes have you noticed? in your life? The first um, experience is peace. Mm. I have peace of heart. First, I was always thinking, worried, you know, unnecessary things. And now I'm able to see my husband as my husband. I'm proud to be married to him. And And for my kids too, there's, I have a renewal of love for them. Initially, I could just blame them for every, I just blame everybody for, for what is happening to me. I want to thank God for the deliverance. Mm. I also want to use this opportunity to thank the man of God for this opportunity, for accepting me. Okay. Having, so, so tell us, with... The deliverance we have seen that God used the woman of God 
to achieve in your life and what has happened in your life before the deliverance? What word of advice do you have for people listening to you, most especially couples that may be having the similar, having the similar situation that you were in before the deliverance? First of all, I want to say that uh, during prayers, deliverance session, when you are seated, whatever you are feeling, whether you are pressed to go and to the, go to the washroom, please be calm and be seated. It is the trap of the devil. If you move, you, would, you might miss your chance of being delivered. Secondly, I would also want to use this opportunity to advise young girls like me, young ladies like me. Please be patient in your marriage. Be prayerful. And whatever you are facing right now, maybe you are having challenges in your marriage, divorce is not the ultimate. Please seek the face of God. Be humble to your husbands and put everything in prayer. Don't go to friends. Don't go to families. Don't compare your lives to what you see on social media. It is just a distraction. Stay focused to God and he would help you through your marriage. Amen. Thank you for your word of advice. Let us hear from your husband. What word of advice you have for couples? My advice to couples is that they should stick to the Bible. Um, lately, you see couples on the on the on social media displaying love, going around kissing each other. I I I don't believe that is love. Growing up, my mom used to tell me that if you want to do anything for somebody, you have to do it behind the person. For example, probably I see Prophet T.B. Joshua come in and I start cleaning this place because I want to be noticed. No, you have to do it whilst it's not around. That is true love. That is true love. So love, is love is not for the gram. It's not for Instagram where you sit on the Instagram and I love my wife, I love, no. You have to do it, you have to act it. It's a doing word. Vous venez d'écouter le magnifique témoignage de ce couple, euh, la femme qui a été délivrée d'un esprit de colère et qui a également reçu une parole de prophétie. Euh, elle est venue à la synagogue église de toutes les nations pour des problèmes maritales. Elle a expliqué qu'elle avait sept ans de mariage. Elle se disputait beaucoup, elle était très agressive, elle giflait même son mari. Cet esprit de colère était si grave euh, qu'elle qu avait même maltraité sa belle-mère qui avait plus de 70 ans. Elle battait ses enfants même jusqu'au sang. Le mari a essayé de lui montrer tout son amour et de l'aider, mais elle n'était jamais satisfaite. La famille est passée par de graves problèmes financiers et à cause de cela, ils ont même été expulsés de leur maison décembre dernier. Malgré tous les efforts du mari pour garder la cohésion du couple devant la colère de sa femme, le mari lui a demandé de quitter le foyer car elle ne cessait de, batté, de battre les enfants. Pardon. Au début, elle ne se souciait pas, mais plus tard, elle recherchait de l'aide ici et là et personne n'était intéressé par leurs problèmes. Désespérée, elle a écrit à la synagogue église de toutes les nations où celle-ci lui a envoyé une lettre d'invitation afin qu'elle vienne ici. Et c'est comme ça, comme vous, vous pouvez le voir, qu'elle a reçu euh, sa délivrance. Le mari également a pris la parole pour expliquer la situation de son côté. Il a expliqué que le jour où il a décidé de se marier, des bandits à mère ont pillé tous les biens de sa maison. Sur le chemin, pour aller voir la famille, il a été même victime de trois accidents consécutifs. Le jour même du mariage, le pasteur qui était censé euh, les marier s'est enfui. Mais Dieu merci, ils ont trouvé un autre pasteur de substitution. La, la situation a empiré à un tel point où il a même perdu, lui-même qui était ingénieur euh, électrique, un, un contrat de 200 millions de dollars à cause de sa femme qui a écrit à la société cliente afin qu'elle qu qu retire son, son offre. Euh, elle a, elle a, le mari même a expliqué que, que sa femme pouvait la gifler pendant qu'il conduisait. Pour résumer le tout, il a reçu, le mari lui-même a reçu un appel de la synagogue église de toutes les nations pour venir sur place. Et c'est comme ça, au cours du, du service dimanche dernier, que sa femme a reçu sa délivrance et que le mari a vu un changement radical. Il a expliqué que la paix est revenue dans sa femme et dans son couple. Elle est, elle est ici présente, elle a demandé pardon à son mari et le couple, comme vous l'avez vu, est maintenant réconcilié. Il conseille à tous d'être patients, que les mariages, que ceux qui sont mariés, que, que vous soyez patients dans les difficultés que vous traversez, que vous soyez euh, humble et que vous ne vous comparez pas aux autres. Mettez votre attention sur Dieu et il vous aidera. 
Escuchamos este poderoso testimonio a través de la palabra profética y liberación, una reconciliación de hogar. Esta mujer nos comenta, junto con su esposo, que eran problemas maritales, la palabra profética fue de hecho esta, la mujer de Dios se acercó hacia ella, le dijo, tienes problemas maritales, eh, un hogar quebrantado y por lo tanto saludo a este esposo por resistir tanto. Hoy viene a dar este poderoso testimonio acerca de esta reconciliación. Esto ocurrió en siete años de su matrimonio, peleas tremendas, el esposo con, desde que se casó con argumentos y peleas constantemente, de hecho al grado de morderle y pegarle cuando él conducía eh, el automóvil. De hecho, llegaba a tanto grado este problema de, de peleas en su hogar, que de hecho su suegra fue a vivir con ellos, una persona de 70 años de edad, debido a esta situación tuvo que abandonar su, eh, la casa, puesto que no podía soportar tanta agresividad por parte de ella. Inclusive eh, nos comenta que era tanto su enojo que se desquitaba con sus pequeños hijos hasta verlos sangrar y desquitar ese enojo que mostraba. El esposo ante esta situación la envió a la escuela mostrándole un grado más de amor para que ella estuviera contenta. Esto no fue suficiente puesto que este problema perseveraba una vez más, porque cuando él regresaba del trabajo, en, en vez de encontrar armonía y paz en su hogar, eran discusiones y peleas. El cansado de esta situación no solamente afectó su hogar, sino incluso en su trabajo. Él nos comenta, es un ingeniero de electricidad, en donde cual tenía progreso siempre en su vida, tenía de hecho eh, contratos millonarios, pero a través de esta situación se dio cuenta que perdió un contrato de 200 millones de, de dólares, también eh, a pesar de que era el número uno en su compañía, perdió todo. Él nos comenta que además de todos estos problemas de tener acusaciones de la, de la policía de su condado, tener accidentes antes de, de que él casarse, era una mujer pacífica, pero después de estos problemas, hoy por la gracia de Dios y esta palabra profética, ellos están libres, reunidos, vimos cómo la mujer le pidió perdón a su esposo por tener todos estos conflictos que había dañado su economía y su relación como matrimonio. Escuchamos también ellos cómo dan las gracias a Dios por esta reconciliación y aconsejan a todo el mundo que se apeguen a la palabra de Dios, que no eh, sigan completamente lo que la, las redes sociales, las amistades pueden este, eh, influir negativamente a sus vidas. Gloria a Dios, un testimonio más de reconciliación y palabra profética en el nombre de Jesús. Ah, uh, thank God Almighty. encourage you that now the Lord has done these wonderful things. This reconciliation has taken place and peace has returned. Like Joshua said, that's for him and his family that will serve the Lord. We want you, your wife and your children to go and serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. And we pray God Almighty, we grant you the grace to do so in Jesus' name. Once again, shall we put our hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ? If you are blessed with this wonderful testimony, once again, put your hands together for Jesus. And before we listen to the next testimony, we are going to watch the screen and see the deliverance the young man received before we listen to his experience and testimony. Let us watch our screen. Mrs. Matu Kamaru from Liberia came to the Synagogue Church of All Nations in search of solution for the desperate case of her son in prison in the USA. And God located her through the prayer of Prophet E.B. Joshua in Jesus' name. As the man of God prays for the people one by one, the fire of God exposes every atom of darkness in their lives, and the histories are rewritten. The moment has come for Mrs. Matu Komaru, who with the touch from the Prophet believes that the case of her son is instantly settled. A few months later, Mrs. Kamaru was overjoyed to hear the news that her son had been released from prison and was being deported back to Liberia. And she decided to bring him straight to the Synagogue Church of All Nations for his final deliverance. As the men and women of God were guided by the Holy Spirit to speak words of divine knowledge, the case of Mrs. Kamaru and her son was not left out. Can I talk to you, brother? You know, I can see you in the jungle. 
You know what I say? You know what yes. jungle? Jungle where people take drug. Yes. And if you want God to restore you, already you have made a mistake. Yes. Now, if you want God to restore you, you have to confess all your bad life and your bad activities. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Already, you have made a mistake. And Jesus Christ will deliver you if you are ready to open up and explain so that the young ones can learn. Yes, ma'am. You have really done a lot with this your hand. But today, you are delivered and you are set free in Jesus' name. Go and confess it. You are free. Okay? My son, uh -huh. you are in America. You are deporting him because you are doing some things then. You are taking drugs, you are smoking, drinking, all that thing. So I'm bringing him here. You are in prison for five years. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus Christ? So the young man is right here in our midst today to share his testimony of deliverance alongside with the mother. So we're going to listen to them as uh, they share their testimony. So once again, welcome you to the Synagogue Church of All Nations in Jesus' name. Can you please introduce yourself? My name is Nagby Way. The woman next to me is my mother, Matu Kamara. You're coming from where? I'm coming from the United States, but originally from Liberia. The, the woman of God gave me a deliverance and word of prophecy stating that I'm in the jungle with a lot of friends, taking drugs, and I must confess to be restored with God and that I've done a lot with my hands. So the deliverance, it's true that when I went to the United States at five with my grandmother. Okay, before you tell us your experience, can you share with us what you were delivered from? A spiritual anger, drugs, and an evil attack. Okay, so tell us how it all began. So it all began when I got split from my mom and went to America with my grandmother. So once I arrived at five, so once I arrived approximately 10 to nine, I started adapting the lifestyle of the United States upon my life. So you listen to the young man. He says his name is Nagbe Weir and he's originally from Liberia. And he said at the age of five, he was taken to the United States of America by his grandmother. And he said when he got to the United States of America, she could not, he could not live uh, at peace with the grandmother because he was always angry about why the grandmother took him away from the mother. And he started living on his own at the age of 10. So with that being said, I started getting misled in the streets, doing drugs with older friends, gang members, because I was in the gang. So I started doing that, and trouble just got worse. So he said at the age of 10, he started living on the streets. He joined gangs, and he was doing drugs, taking drugs, and also selling drugs at the age of 10. So I started that to benefit myself because the relationship between me and my grandmother was not strong. It was a boundary between us. So I distanced myself from her, started depending on older friends in the streets, gangs, and selling drugs to support myself. So he said uh, there was a strained relationship between he and his grandmother, and as a result of that, he started living an independent life, living with gangs on the street, doing drugs, and also selling drugs to, to make a living. So when things start getting out of hand, I start going to treatment center, drug treatments, getting detained for my grandmother. Then it was getting out of hand even worse, so they had put a GPS monitor upon me. 
So he said when his case became worse as a drug addict, he said he was now being taken to a treatment center and he was going in and out of the treatment center to the extent that the uh, security agents have to put um, a GPRS monitor. That is, anywhere he is, he will be monitored. So can you tell us what that monitor was all about, the GPRS? That was because they said they couldn't really control me because one moment I do this and I do the next. So the monitor was for, for my blood rate, my location, if I take any drugs, and a curfew when I'm supposed to be home. So wherever I'm at, 24-7, they know where I'm at. So he said he was put on surveillance because of the lifestyle he was living. And as a result of that, that uh, GPROS device was placed in his body so that anywhere he goes, they'll be able to monitor his movement, monitor his blood rate, and know from, from that device if he was actually taking drug at that time. So it continued. I started getting detained. So I pretended I was doing good, then they released me. I'll pretend they'll release me. Then they just decided to take me to a bigger treatment facility. So he said at that time, he was being taken to detention every now and then. Whenever they go on raid, they will arrest him, take him to detention. And after a while, he will pretend that he has changed and they will release him. Later again, they will find him in the same act of taking drugs and also selling drugs and take him back to detention. And after a while, he will also behave as if he has changed again and they will release him. When this continued frequently, they, they realized that he was not changing. They had to take him to a bigger detention. So once that happened, they seen I was becoming a junior adult at the age of 18. So I've been released. So once I got released, Approximately 2013, I started getting in trouble again. Then a friend of my, like a friend of mine, a bunch of gang members came into my house and asked they needed my assistant, which was help. So he said he was doing this until he became 18. And at the age of 18, he was released as an adult. And he said while he was at home, some of his gang members came to him to call him that there was, uh, there was a, 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 an assignment for him to do. And so they came to fetch him at home. So I left that morning and went to assist them. At the time they brought two stolen vehicles, was not to my acknowledge. So I followed behind, there was a disturbance within the gangs, two different gangs, and things got out of hand, wasn't nobody communicating. So he said uh, there were two gangs, two gang groups that were having issues. They were having fights. So they came to call him because he was a member of their gang, and they came to call him. And when they came for him, they brought two stolen vehicles. And he was not aware that the vehicles were stolen. So they went in one vehicle, and he was given the key to drive the second stolen vehicle. And can you tell us? As a gang member, tell us how you operate and what are the things you were known for at that time as a gang member. As a gang member, I was in the streets carrying firearms, guns, hurting other people, retaliations from things that happened in the past and in the future, and just putting our life on the line for what we believe in instead of higher faith for what we believe in from other people. So he says, as a gang member, what they do is to go out on the street and fight. When they have clash with other gangs, they fight. They, they, they have some certain beliefs that they stand on. So they fight for issues of the past, the present, and the future. What they do not even understand, they fight over it, and they use firearms. So once that happened, the atmosphere was corrupt. Wasn't nobody trying to communicate at the time. So I'm not a I don't know how to argue, so I just decided to leave the scene to go get further protection within that argument upon two gangs. So once I was leaving, I got a phone call from my friends, told me the scene was clear, I should come back. Okay, so he said when they actually came for him and he went in one of the stolen vehicles, driving the vehicle, and the other gang members 
also took the other vehicle. When they got to the scene, it was a fight between two gangs. And he said when he saw the atmosphere, he was not comfortable. So he left the scene because of the chaos and the confusion. So while he was on his way, one of the gang members called him back. He said because there were police around and ready to arrest them, so he left. But while he was on his way, driving that same car, he was called back by one of the gang members that told, oh, please come back, everywhere is clear now, the police are gone, not knowing that it was a setup. So once I got there, came back, they were arrested, then the cops got behind me, ran the license plates, told me to stop, I refused, went on a high-speed chase from the cops, then I crashed the vehicle and got arrested. So he said when he eventually came back, he discovered that he was, it was a setup. The police were still around. So as he was trying to escape, the policemen started chasing him. And he was being told that that car he was riding was a stolen vehicle. But rather than him stopping for the police, he said he went on a high speed. And the police were after him, chasing him at a high speed. Then he crashed the vehicle on an object, and that was how he was arrested. So once I was arrested, I got incarcerated, went to jail, and they booked me on the charge of theft by receiving and operating a motor vehicle fleet arrest. So those charges carry one to 25 years. So he said when he was arrested, he was charged for both the gangster life was living, doing drugs, and also for committing an offense. He was riding on a stolen vehicle, and also he was escaping arrest. And he said all these charges attract up to 25 years imprisonment. So they told me in order not to get 25 years, I have to tell on the next person. So while in the game, it was silence of secrecy where you can't tell on the next person, you have to take your own fault. So he said he was being advised by the law enforcement agents that for him to get a lesser sentence, he had to open up to expose other gang members. And he said, as a gang member, there is an oath of secrecy that you don't expose each other in the case of arrest or when there's trouble. So I refuse to cooperate. So not at the time, I'm thinking nobody is telling on me as well. So I decided I was going to go to trial. So if I go to trial, if I lose, they're going to give me 25 years. But if I don't lose, I'm going to get set free. So it was, a, it was an option, a risk I was taking. So at the last minute, my attorney told me that trial is not the best option that my friends are telling on me. So he said uh, he decided to take the risk of not exposing other gang members. So he decided that he would go for the trial. And if he lost the trial, he'll go for 25 years in jail. And if he won the trial, he will be set free. But his attorney came to him and said, hey, the people you are trying to cover up, they have already exposed you. So you just have to say the truth, expose them, so that you can get a lesser bargain for your prison term. So with that being said, I still didn't cooperate. So I just told him to give me the next plea bargain, which was the deal. Instead of 25 years, what can I take instead of 25 years? So they gave me a lesser time, and they told me to plead guilty, but I refused again. I pled no contest with states. I'm not saying I did it, or I'm not saying I didn't do it. So that was that. So he said uh, he still refused to cooperate, to expose his gang members. So what happened was that he opted for another option, which was a plea bargain, to plead guilty. And he said he refused to plead guilty, that if he had pleaded guilty, they would give him a lesser prison sentence, but still he refused. So it was a case of not pleading guilty and not claiming innocence. So they dropped my 1 to 20 from 1 to 20 to 0 to 5. Then I pled out to two charges, 0 to 5, 0 to 5 carry 10 years imprisonment. So he was now faced with a situation where he would have to go to 10 years imprisonment just because he was not cooperating. So they gave me the maximum of eight years. So once I got that, they transferred me to 
prison at a young, at 18, but with, I don't know how to call it. Um, so can, can you tell us what was the difference between the prison you were now transferred to uh, compared to the one you were before? I was in a, a entry program first, the jail, but once I got sentenced, it took me to a maximum prison with the adults because of my lifestyle in the streets, my past. So they said, since I act like an adult, they're going to treat me as an adult. So put me with the lifers at the maximum prison. So he said, once he was sentenced, he said now he was now transferred from the normal prison, the minimum prison, to a maximum prison. The minimum, minimum prison uh, is for the juveniles, the young people. But because of the criminal activities he had partaken in, he was no longer regarded as a young person, as a, as, a, as, a, as a youth, but now as an adult. So he was sentenced to a maximum prison for eight years, which is meant for adults and hardened criminals. So once all that happened, I did my time. I participated in treatments. Fake it, pretend like I was doing good. To be okay, honest. so now tell us, can you tell us what, how did you now find yourself being deported? Can you just share with us what happened that led to your deportation and how God intervened in your life? Um, it was complicated. I was told that I was being released. Then somehow they told me it was all a, a setup, a joke. So can you tell us what happened before the issue of release came? What was, what was the turn of events that led to your being released? Um, I was in ICE custody. So then they told me that I was going to get deported, but they don't know which country. So you were told that you were going to be set free and deported, but you didn't know which country you were going to be deported to, right? Yes, yes, so I waited. They put me on a flight with a bunch of inmates, prisoners to West Africa, and it was an 18-hour flight, never been in Liberia. So once the flight took off, they said it was going to West Africa, and I was stopping in Liberia. Okay, so he said after he was released, he was tricked to the airport that he had been released. But then when he got to the airport, he found himself being put on a flight down to West Africa and he was told that he was going to be taken to Liberia. Now, before you were released and deported, can you tell us how long you spent in the jail? In the detention, I spent approximately a year, a year and a half, from, from one detention to another detention, just being played with. Okay, so he said he spent about a year or a year and a half in different detentions before he was released, taken to the airport, and now deported. So tell us what happened when you arrived in West Africa and where eventually were you um, deported to? So once I got deported, we arrived in June, 2000, June 19, 2018, arrived in Liberia. So then they took me to the ICE agents. Then they told me that in order for me to be released, somebody had to sign for me, which I don't know about. So me never being there, I have no family support that was going to release me. So a friend of mine that I didn't know of at the time told me he'll have his family release me and he'll help take care of me until I was able to support myself. So he said when he eventually found himself in Liberia, he said... Uh, he was asked to get someone to sign for him to be released. And he said since he had never been to Liberia all his life, he had no family, no, no one, no relation to sign for him. But he met one uh, young man who also was deported from the U.S. alongside with him. And he said that one offered to assist him because his uncle and auntie were coming for him and that his, the other man's uncle would sign for his release and his auntie will sign for his own release. So when that was finna happen, I seen a woman coming that I don't know. She came crying, came to me. So once she hugged me, I realized 
That was my mom. So he said while he was waiting for these people to come and someone to sign for his release, he said a woman just came in strangely and came to him, identified him, hugged him, and that was when he realized that this one must be my mom. So, so now tell us, prior to this time, you mean you never recognize your mom? You have not when last did you see your mom before this time? 16 years. Never seen her. How old were you when you saw your mom last? Five years old. Five years old. So since your grandmother took you to the United States, you never saw your mom again? No, never seen her. We just talked a few times on the phone. You only talked a few times on the phone? That was about But you it. never knew how she looked like? Nope. So for the first time in 16 years, you were seeing your mother? Yes. Hmm. And so how did you feel at that very moment? Confused. Because I don't know her. So that embracement, that bond, that love is never there because I don't know her. So I just felt confused. Mm. Okay. So you heard it from the brother. I said he was confused at that moment because he never knew her in person. But at that point in time, he didn't know what to do. He was just confused. But he knew that this one was uh, his mother. So then what now happened after you met your mother? So I met her. We hugged. She signed me out. We talked. Got to know a little about each other. Then we left. Okay, so that was when you, your mother brought you to the synagogue church. Can you tell us how you now find yourself here? So in the process of that, she asked for my documentation. They refused to give her my documentation. So with that, they told us we couldn't leave the country. They were trying to monitor me. So she, we took a risk of applying, fixing the less I passe to travel across several countries to come here. Okay, so he said at that point in time, because he was still very young, the authorities in Liberia refused to give him a document to leave the country that he said he was still going to be monitored because of his record. And he said the mom took the risk of obtaining a laissez passe with which he took her, she took him through the borders, through different countries, Liberia to um, Cote d'Ivoire, down to Nigeria, right? Yes. So that's how you find yourself here at the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Yes. So I believe your, your mom would tell the rest story, uh, how God Almighty, at that what point, God intervened in your life. So, madam, so the woman will speak in, um, in another language, which will be interpreted uh, in a French language, so she will be able to express herself very well. So welcome you to the synagogue in Jesus' name. Can you... You have, can you tell us your name and who is the young man standing beside you? Madame, vous êtes la bienvenue. Est-ce que vous pouvez vous présenter et l'homme qui est à côté de vous? Emmanuel. Good morning, church. Good morning. <laughs> bon, ce jeune homme, moi je m'appelle Matou Kamara. Ce jeune homme qui est auprès de moi, c'est mon fils. Uh, my name is Tamara and the, the person beside me is my son. Je viens de Liberia, mais je vis en Abidjan, en Côte d'Ivoire. I'm coming from Liberia, but living in Côte d'Ivoire. Okay, can you please tell us what was the... F okay, the young man beside you is your son, right? Oui. Okay, can you tell us what was the thing that brought you the first time to the Synagogue Church of All Nations? Est-ce que, est que vous pouvez nous expliquer quelle est la première chose qui vous a emmené ici à la Synagogue Église de toutes les nations? La première chose qui m'a amené ici pour la première fois, c'était pour mon, le problème de mon fils. I came here for the first time because of the problem I was having with my son. Bon, c'est ma maman qui m'a appelé aux États-Unis pour me dire elle veut que je vienne au Nigeria. So my mom called from the USA saying that she wants, her, uh, she wants her, that I come here to Nigeria, to, uh, to the synagogue. Et je lui ai dit pourquoi. Elle m'a dit, je vais t'envoyer chez l'homme de Dieu pour prévenir de ton fils. Je lui ai dit, si c'est pour mon fils, il n'y a pas de problème. So, um, she said, she asked her mom, why do you want me to come here in Nigeria? The mom said, 
no, it's for your son. He needs help. So uh, you need to come here in uh, the synagogue church here in Nigeria. So she now replied that if it's for my son, no problem, I will do it. What was the problem with your son at that time? Quel était le problème avec votre fils? Mon fils était en prison pour cinq ans. My son was in prison for five years. Okay, so after you came here and we saw where you were prayed for by the man of God, tell us what happened after the prayer you received on behalf of your son who was in prison for drug in the United States. Que s'est-il passé lorsque vous êtes venu ici et que l'homme de Dieu a prié avec vous alors que votre fils était en prison aux États-Unis? Quand je suis rentré à l'église, l'homme de Dieu, le prophète Louis Joshua m'a touché. Et puis je suis reparti un mois après, mon fils était libéré. So when I came here, um, the man of God prayed for me, laid hand on me, and I went back to my country. And one month after I went back, my son was um, freed. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus Christ? I hope you remember when the young man was testifying that he was sentenced to eight years imprisonment. And after he spent about a year, a year and a half, the prison officers came to him and said he was going to be released, just like that. And truly, he was released, taken to the airport, and now deported down to Liberia, his country. And that was just soon after the mother came to the Synagogue Church of All Nations, having received a phone call from uh, the grandmother that the son was in the prison for drugs and that she should come to the Synagogue Church of All Nations for prayers on behalf of the son. And after she received that touch from the man of God, the son was released from prison in the United States and now deported to Liberia. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus Christ? <laughs> so without taking much time, tell us at what age did you see your son last? À quel âge vous avez vu votre fils pour la dernière fois? En l'âge de 5 ans. He was 5 years old. So the next time you saw him, he was already a grown-up boy like this. Donc la dernière fois que vous l'avez vu, il était déjà grand. Oui, bien sûr. Yes, yes. I will, we believe the rest is history now. Just tell us how do you feel now that your son is totally delivered from this lifestyle of drug and gangsterism that he has been living over there in a foreign country. How do you feel now that your son is delivered completely? Comment vous ressentez maintenant que votre fils est complètement délivré de, du style de vie qu'il avait? Actuellement, je suis vraiment heureuse. La mère la plus heureuse. Je suis contente, mon fils est libéré. Merci, Dieu merci. I am now the mom, the most happy, the happiest mom, that my son is now free. Thank you, Jesus. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? Okay, tell us, from the very day you set your eyes on your son, the kind of life he was living, his appearance, everything, tell us, since after his deliverance, what are the changes you have noticed? Par rapport à votre fils et son apparence et, et tout, quelles sont les, les différences que vous avez vues maintenant qu'il est délivré? Quand mon, fils arri- quand mon fils est arrivé, il me parlait de la cigarette. Je veux fumer, je veux fumer. Je lui disais qu'il n'est qu'à être patient, que ça va aller. Moi, ça ne me plaît pas. Mais arrivé ici... Quand la prophète lui est touché, jusqu'à aujourd'hui, ça va. Même quand on passe par là à l'hôtel, les jeunes qui fument à côté me disent, maman, ça là, ça me dit plus rien. Uh, she said that the first time when the, she, she, she met with the, the son, that the son always was wanted to smoke, to smoke, to smoke. And after the, the, the prophet prayed for him, after his deliverance, she's saying that even when she, she's going back to the hotel, uh, the son, they will see people smoking, the son will say, no, this... Thing doesn't interest me anymore. Shall we clap for Jesus Christ? So lastly, does she have any word of advice for people listening to her testimony? Est-ce que vous avez un conseil pour les gens qui écoutent votre témoignage? Bon, ce que je vais dire à ceux qui me regardent, que le problème que j'ai traversé, si eux ils sont dedans, qu'ils mettent tout dans la main de Dieu, prier et la foi, Dieu fera le reste. For anyone who is uh, passing through what I'm I pass uh, that you should put your trust in God and God will see you through. Amen. Thank you very much. Let's clap for Jesus Christ. So let's, let's hear from our brother. So tell us, since after your deliverance last Sunday, 
how do you feel now? Those cravings you used to have, the urge for violence and for drugs and for that wayward lifestyle. Tell us, how, how do you feel now? I feel restored, different, that I don't crave for those or act the way I used to act. Just feel blessed. And tell us about your spiritual life now. What are the things you can do now that you couldn't do with your life before as a child of God? Things I couldn't do before was to focus, read, pray, read the Bible. But now all that is possible. I can pray, read my Bible consistently, and stay focused. Amen. Now, share with us a word of advice. What word of advice you have for especially youth like you who are still living that kind of wayward lifestyle, doing drugs, selling drugs, living on the streets, gangster life. What advice do you have for them? My advice is, is not the way out. What you see is not what it really is. So pick and choose your battles and weigh everything out and pick what's going to benefit you in the long run. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus Christ. You've listened to our brother. He said, everyone still living that kind of wayward lifestyle, life of crime, drugs, gangsterism, they should abstain from that life because it's not the way they look at it. They should seek the Lord and live their life for the glory of God, live a meaningful life. And now that the Lord God Almighty has set you free, we want to encourage you to stay true to our Lord Jesus Christ, to make the word of God the standard for your life. Now that that evil spirit has been cast out of you, the place has to be taken, it has to be filled by the word of God. And we pray that God Almighty will give you the inner grace to make the word of God the standard for your life so that your deliverance will be permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, let's clap for Jesus. Vous venez d'entendre le témoignage de ce jeune homme qui vient des États-Unis, qui dit que tout a commencé lorsqu'à l'âge de 5 ans, il a été envoyé avec sa grand-mère pour vivre aux États-Unis. Il a dit que sa grand-mère n'avait pas trop le temps de prendre soin de lui. C'est comme cela qu'il s'est retrouvé dans la rue. Et étant dans la rue, il a commencé à prendre de la drogue, à vendre de la drogue. Et étant aussi membre de gang, il a commencé à faire des règlements de compte dans les rues entre gangs. Il avait des, des fusils, des, des armes avec lui. Il était vraiment renommé dans la rue. Euh, il a dit que chaque fois qu'il allait rentrer en prison, il ressortait de la prison, il prétendait bien se comporter à l'intérieur de la prison, qu'on puisse pouvoir le relâcher sur le, des, des choses comme la drogue, prendre de la drogue, vendre de la drogue, même règlement de compte de gang. Il a dit jusqu'à ce qu'il ait 18 ans, parce qu'il était très jeune, on ne pouvait pas lui donner de, de sentence très prononcée, jusqu'à 18 ans qu'il est sorti des prisons. Et c'est comme ça que là qu'il y a eu un membre de, du gang qui est venu le voir chez lui, lui disant, avec deux voitures volées, ils avaient une mission pour lui. C'est comme cela qu'il a conduit la deuxième voiture et que, durant cette mission, que la police l'a arrêté à nouveau, en étant plus jeune. Il était maintenant quelqu'un de mature, il avait passé la majorité à 18 ans. Il a été mis dans une prison, euh, une très grande prison avec les, les plus grands criminels et les plus grands meurtriers qui se trouvent aux états unis parce qu'il était plus jeune, il avait beaucoup, beaucoup de, de cas qui ont été, été rassemblés sur son compte par rapport au fait qu'il avait été arrêté beaucoup de fois à la station de police. En rassemblant tous ces cas, ils ont réalisé qu'il devait euh, recevoir une sentence de plus de 8 ans. C'est comme ça qu'il s'est retrouvé en prison. Il n'a pas pu pouvoir euh, sortir de prison jusqu'à ce que sa mère vienne ici à la synagogue de toute la nation et vienne prier pour lui lorsque sa grand-mère a appelé sa mère pour lui dire que son fils était en prison pour une période de plus de 5 ans. Elle est venue à la synagogue et l'homme de Dieu, prophétique Joshua, a prié pour elle pour ce cas. C'est comme cela qu'elle a dit que lorsqu'elle est rentrée chez elle, un mois après, son fils a été libéré. Et son fils, lui, là-bas, disait que vraiment, c'est vraiment la grâce de Dieu qui l'a fait sortir de cette prison. Car pendant un an et demi, on l'a fait sortir d'un d'un pays, d'un état des États-Unis à un autre état, lui disant qu'il allait être déporté, qu'il allait être déporté. Mais lorsque sa mère est venue ici, c'est comme cela qu'il a reçu le papier pour être déporté en Libérie, en Libérien. Et c'est comme cela qu'en arrivant dans ce pays qu'il n'avait jamais vu auparavant, il s'est retrouvé seul, personne ne pouvait signer pour lui, pour le faire sortir justement de là où il était retenu euh, en Libérie. Et c'est comme cela que soudainement il a vu une femme courant vers lui en pleurant. Il a réalisé que c'était sa mère, que sa mère qu'il n'avait pas vue depuis plus de 16 ans. Depuis l'âge de 5 ans, lorsqu'il est parti aux États-Unis, sa mère est venue maintenant le retrouver. C'est comme cela qu'ils ont, ils ont trouvé un moyen de pouvoir venir ici à la synagogue église de toute nation pour rendre grâce à Dieu. Et effectivement, lorsqu'il est venu ici dimanche dernier, la prophétesse lui a donné une parole prophétique disant qu'il a fait beaucoup de choses avec sa main. Il, a beaucoup, il y a beaucoup de sens sur sa main aussi, les choses de la drogue. Il doit tout confesser afin que sa délivrance soit complète. Et aujourd'hui, il est là pour confesser tout ce qu'il a fait pour la gloire de Dieu. Il est complètement libre. Il n'a plus le désir de vouloir fumer, de prendre la drogue pour la gloire de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ.
Continuamos con más poderosos testimonios aquí en la Sinagoga Iglesia de todas las naciones Escuchamos la voz de esta familia cómo se reconcilió después de un gran problema de tragedia desde su infancia Este hombre nos comenta que desde los cinco años de edad se tuvo que separar de su madre Viajando a los Estados Unidos con su abuela eh, gracias, eh, Debido a, a tras esta falta de, de, una, de un hogar, él salió desde pequeño a consumir drogas y a juntarse con gangas desde los cinco años de edad Debido a este problema se fue agravando En donde él tenía que estar en casas de rehabilitaciones desde pequeño Él pretendía estar bien, salía y volvían a internarlo otra mente, o nuevamente Debido a que él consumía drogas y vendía drogas al mismo tiempo Este problema suscitó eh, hasta los 18 años de edad En donde ya no lo podían retener en estos centros de rehabilitación Y lo tenían que traspasar a un centro de rehabilitación eh, de alta y máxima Atención debido a este problema de drogas y de, y de crímenes que él cometía Al unirse a estas, a estas gangas, él eh, regresó a su casa finalmente pretendiendo estar liberado Pero estas gangas lo perseguían, siendo que lo llevaron a una zona de crimen eh, Robando dos autos, en el cual uno de ellos estaba conduciéndolo él Hasta que esta escena de armas de fuego y de atentados eh, le llamaron y cayó en una trampa En donde finalmente los pol el policía lo arrestó Y esto lo llevó a prisión En una sentencia aproximada de 25 años de edad Debido a estar con gangas, drogas y manejar autos robados Y, este, y fue sentenciado sobre esto Él no tenía alternativa de, de poder denunciar y reducir su sentencia Él se rehusó a esto y se redució a 10 años de prisión eh, Debido a sus antecedentes de crimen eh, Lo traspasaron a una máxima Retención, una máxima prisión en los Estados Unidos Pero él después de que vimos en pantalla que su madre Vino a la iglesia sinagoga de todas las naciones Y recibió palabra profética acerca de que eh, vivía en una jungla Drogas y confesar una vida de mala actividad por parte de la mujer de Dios Él hoy está compartiendo este maravilloso testimonio Que inmediatamente después que vimos en pantalla Que su mamá recibió oración por parte del profeta Tibiosa Recibió una llamada de su abuela que tenía que venir a la iglesia por ayuda a su hijo, ella decidió un paso de fe, está aquí hoy compartiendo ese testimonio que inmediatamente que ella eh, eh, vino a la iglesia de, de, de todas las naciones, vino con su hijo finalmente que fue deportado y, y llevado al país de Liberia, ellos vienen hoy para la gloria de Dios confirmando esta profecía y este testimonio de completa libertad, él dejando completamente las drogas y su madre feliz de compartir con él una nueva vida para la gloria de Dios, continuamos. Thank you very much. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Thank you. So we have more people waiting to share their testimony, but because of time, there are different other activities lined up for today's service. So we are moving to other activities. We have to give glory to God for all he has done, all that he's doing, and what he's going to do in our lives today. But before then, let's rise to our feet and let us honor God. It is time to do our responsibility in the house of God. The secret of living an abundant life is to be a good giver.